morning everyone today we'll start with the chapter seeds structure and germination now first of all we will discuss about the three types which are there the three terms fruit seed and grain what is the difference between these three now what is a fruit it is a ripened ovary fruit is a ripened ovary the ovary wall which is present in uh, in the ovary that forms the fruit wall and the fruit protects the seed and helps in the dispersal so uh, the seeds are present inside the fruit so the fruit is protecting the seeds next we have the seed which is a ripened ovule now what happens is the embryo which is present it develops into a new plant so the seed is containing the embryo which will develop into a new plant and the seed coat which is present the outer covering uh, of the seed it protects the embryo from any mechanical damage any damage takes place uh, the seed coat will protect it from that damage example in case of seed is like bean seed and peas then we have the grain now what is a grain uh, when the fruit wall and the seed coat are fused together in the grains the fruit wall and the seed coat they are fused together and they form a protective layer that is known as grain so if you have seen maize wheat they are considered as grains so in your previous chapters you have studied that after fertilization the ov mature ovule is there that uh, mature ovule then contains an embryo which is a uh, part of the uh, the when the male gamete and the female gamete they fuse together that is the sperm nucleus and the egg nucleus when they uh, fuse together and the embryo which is present it remains in the dormant state it remains in the dormant state now this dormant state it will remain as long as it will not get the favorable conditions when it will get the favorable conditions moisture air water everything when all the favorable conditions are uh, provided to the dormant embryo then it will start germinating unless a uh, the embryo can withstand the unfavorable conditions of temperature drought and the seeds will can remain dormant up to 100 years and when they get the favorable conditions then they will start germinating next we have types of seeds so on the basis of the cotyledons there are basically two types of seeds monocotyledonous seeds and dicotyledonous seeds the seeds which are having one cotyledon are monocotyledonous seeds and the seeds which are having two cotyledons are dicotyledonous seeds example of monocots is maize grass of dicots is pea gram bean and the seeds they also vary in size uh, some are very small they are not even uh, visible with the naked eye as that of poppy seeds if you have seen uh, poppy is a flower so the seeds are very uh, small and they can be quite large in case of watermelon you can see the seeds then you can see in case of coconut it is the largest even the mango seed you see it's quite large uh, like that of a stone so the seeds they vary according to the size and then on the basis of the endosperm there are two types of seeds they are classified into two types albuminous seeds and ex albuminous seeds albuminous seeds are the cotyledons are thin membranous and the endosperm persists that means the endosperm which is present this endosperm it is very delicate and it is not so functional so this endosperm which is present in the albuminous seeds then we have uh, the monocot albuminous seeds poppy custard apple then we have dicot albuminous seeds cereals millets palm they all come under the albuminous seeds now in ex albuminous seeds which are also known as non endospermic
now non endospermic seeds which means in this the cotyledons they store the food and they become thick and fleshy here the cotyledon is very delicate and it is not so functional whereas in x albuminous the cotyledon will store the food various examples valisneria gram pea mango mustard they all are non endospermic seeds here the cotyledon will store the food now we'll study about the structure of bean seed now there are different kinds of beans uh, like uh, french beans broad beans different beans are present but their general structure if you'll see that is same they have the kidney shaped biconvex biconcave sites like this only now if you'll see in this structure the seed coat consists of two parts one is testa and the other is tegmen now what is the difference between these testa and tegmen the testa which is there it is the outermost covering hard brownish covering which is present and it will protect the innermost parts from any injury or it will not let the bacteria to enter inside so this is the outermost hard covering testa then tegmen which is present it is very thin layer which is present next to the testa and it is also protective in function now if we'll see this structure if like this if the uh, the bean structure is present here towards the uh, this side the concave side a white scar is present and this scar which is present that is known as hilum and what is the function of hilum it is a spot which will represent that the ovule uh, was attached to the ovary through the placenta by this part hilum part and then we have a tiny pore called micropyle which is present here only if you will see here only a small pore will be present which is known as micropyle and this micropyle it marks the opening through which the pollen tube enters the ovule as you have studied in your previous chapter now it is uh, the function of micropyle is very important what is the function the micropyle through micropyle only the seeds when you soak them in water through micropyle only they will absorb water and it that water will be available to the embryo for germination and micropyle helps in the diffusion of the respiratory gases and help the embryo to grow then in the seeds you will see there are two there are two cotyledons present and on carefully separating the uh, cotyledons you will see the plumule is present this plumule will give rise to the shoot and this radical will give rise to the root now we'll be studying about the maize grain now in maize grain uh, you will see that it is a monocotyledonous and endospermic seed uh, the examples rice wheat oats they are all uh, considered as a type of grains now in maize grain you will see that the fruit wall and the seed coat which are present they are fused together and it forms a protective layer and so such a fruit is known as a grain when the fruit wall and seed coat they are fused together now there is another layer present here which is known as aleurone layer this is a layer which is formed of thin epithelial layer is there epithelial cells and this layer is rich in proteins the aleurone layer and then we have a scutellum present this scutellum which is present what is its function it consists of the radical and a plumule so it is a single cotyledon and consists of radical which will give rise to the roots and the plumule for the shoot and if uh, then we have the coleopetyle and plumule and radical and coleoriza now what is coleopetyle it is a protective sheath which is enclosing the plumule so it is protecting the plumule and the hair radical is present coleoriza which is present it is protecting the 
radical so if you have to remember this all forms the part of the embryo so if you have to remember you can see that in coleoptile p is there so it is protecting the plumule in coleoriza r is there it is protecting the radical so it is the protective sheet of the radical now uh, this uh, region the endosperm and the embryonic region which is present it is separated by a thin epithelial layer and this epithelial layer only when it is present on the towards the outermost layer it is the it is rich in proteins so the outermost is the fuse pericarp and the testa then you have the aileron which is rich in the proteins then the endosperm and the embryonic region it is separated by epithelial layer we have the radical and the plumule which is present in the scutellum area and coleoptile is the protective sheet of the plumule and coleoriza is the protective sheet of the radical i hope it is clear thank you